Right on, right on. How's everybody doing out there this week? Thank you very much for joining me here on the Rick Naya Show, making it happen live action. Uh, I want to say thank you to, to, for last week's uh, event. Uh, was just a a really good time with a, a, a wonderful host and uh, another personality of the cannabis industry. I want to I want to thank uh, Janet McAllister for being there alongside me and with me all these years, and sharing the love and common sense policy throughout New England and setting an example uh, as a dignitary and a diplomat within our industry and keeping your head always, uh, again, no pun intended in this show, at the highest levels. So thank you very much, Janet, for joining me and sharing your love. Uh, I wanna take a small uh, portion of time now to thank my primary sponsors at Circle Sign Works, American Machine Vision, and Clear Light Technologies. Uh, my brother and family at CryoCure, Kind Clean, and Bean Town Green Town. I want to thank them and Kinesk, one of my sponsors, Kinesk. Thank you very much for the lovely T-shirts. Uh, thank you for thinking of me and making the uh, the seal of approval from the Rick Naya uh, show. And I want to thank you so much for all you do for me at Kinesk and all of the sponsors and Mascan. I want to thank Mascan very much for always doing what they do and uh, sharing their love and helping bring the community and help it grow together. And I also want to thank uh, Fisher Agencies. If anybody needs any help, uh, please contact Melissa Fisher, uh, Faulkner, I'm sorry, Melissa Faulkner. Uh, she's awesome and she can help you with any of your insurance needs. Uh, real cool uh, sponsor of ours. Thank you very much. So without further ado, I'm not going to spend a lot of time like I do on sponsors this week. I want to get uh, our, 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 our next uh, guests on and uh, I want to share how I met them. <clears throat> how I was exposed to them, so to speak, uh, because uh, not only myself, but them, uh, I've always worked in a uh, socially impacted and economically impacted uh, form of our society and have been um, have been in a, a position in our Canada industry that is unlike many others and uh, not only difficult, uh, but also very powerful. And uh, the people at Alchemy League, uh, as if you didn't know what alchemy represents and means, uh, just get a good look at your periodic table and know what stardust is when you put it all together. Uh, here we lie, uh, us beings together as one. So uh, again, without further ado, let, let me welcome uh, the founders and owners, uh, Leah Daniels and Jay Cook. I wanna thank you very much for being on air with me here today. Uh, I, I also want to say hi to uh, Robert Baby Joy Jeffrey, uh, another brother of ours at MassCan and at Alchemy League. Uh, I want to say thank you uh, to you guys for being here with me and sharing your love with me uh, as what, when we met. Uh, you know, I, I'm a great advocate uh, here in New Hampshire. I'm very outspoken in the Canada arena. I'm considered a diplomat, a dignitary within it. Uh, I speak very highly at all levels uh, of the Canada arena, whether it be writing bills, rules, and laws. So I was invited by Julie Mejia, uh, who isn't with us this evening, and I want to send my love to Julie. Uh, yeah. Not well today. And we want to let her know that, that she is with us. And uh, that she's a very powerful sister and a very endeared friend of mine and the girls and Alchemy League and, a, and a, one of the founders and one of the on the board and just a dear friend of mine. Uh, sorry, you're not with us today, Julie, but you are. Um, and then, you know, Robert uh, with Mascan. And I, I just want to it's kind of like the periodic table. There's a lot of people that make Alchemy League come together. But it was a vision uh, that occurred many years ago uh, with Lee and Jay. And just knowing their place uh, and their rightful place uh, here in the Canada arena. So, without, again, uh, let's introduce yourselves. Uh, please, you know, introduce yourselves, and you know, we can start with Leah J and Robert. Let's give a little bit, a little bit about yourselves, and uh, you know, what it is you guys are bringing to the cannabis arena. Um, well, first of all, my name is Leah Daniels. This is um, my wife, Jason Cook Daniels. Um, <laughs> And um, we are Alchemy League, along with, as, as you said, Rick, Julie, um, it started off with Don and Emilio and Dave and a thought and a, 
and an imaginable um, opportunity that was made available here in the state of Massachusetts that I felt like um, I needed to take advantage of. Um, at least throw my hat in the ring. Um, I felt like I could be effective. You know, I felt like, you know, I could be positive in the industry. I didn't really know much or, or anything. And you know that I'm, I'm quite always open to ask and admit, do you not know? And so I was trying to tinker around with the Zoom thing. I got extremely frustrated. I don't like all of that kind of stuff. And I make it clear so people that know me don't know. But, um, but the things that I do like and I think that I am well at, um, I thought it was going to be bringing people together from this community to take advantage of the opportunity to change a life for generations to come. And so that's the reason why I thought um, I would throw my hat in the ring. And that's why we sit here um, today. Well, let's share a little bit more about yourself personally. I think it's, you know, it's nice, but let's let the fans and those of us that uh, uh, don't know of us a little bit more about yourself and, uh, you know, your upbringing, uh, the community that you're from, uh, your schooling, your uh, education and your career path. Uh, you know, it, it's a, it, your story is quite unique, like all of ours, uh, everybody in our arena. And right. let's, let's share a little bit more about yours, Jay. And your, I mean, uh, Leah, I'm sorry. A little bit about your fundamentals, you know, your grade school, where you grew up and oh. where you went to school, your, your education background, and then your career path. Let us okay. know a little bit more about that. Okay, no problem. I think I can do that well. Um, first of all, um, I grew up in Academy Homes, which is a community project in the city of Roxbury. Um, my mother died when I was three years old and it wasn't from any drugs. She was hemorrhaging because she was pregnant with my brother who also passed when she passed when I was three. Mm. And so my grandmother, my mother's mother, raised me um, with my two uncles um, and all, all of them were 11 and 12 years older than me. You can only imagine if my mom's having me and I'm three, you know, so she's in grandmother phase, not three-year-old phase, but um, nonetheless, she loved me um, and my uncle brothers. We grew up together. I, I, um, I went to Mecco, um, Lexington Junior High, um, graduated from there, went on to um, college, went to an all-black college, historically black college. Did you play any sports? Were you involved in any sports in high school? Did you, what, what were um, your... No, I didn't really get into like any real sports, sports like on a team until um, college and also in the military. Um, that's when I started playing softball and really like engaged with basketball um, and traveling around with the teams like that. Right. Um, from there, um, I went to the military. I was in the Army, 91 Bravo, infantry support medic. Loved it. Hoorah. Hoorah. Um, and so for people um, who say to veterans, thank you for your service. As a veteran, I say thank you because that's a canned response. But if you really want to thank a veteran, Tell them to thank you for their sacrifice. As we leave our country, we go on um, to other countries to defend this country, to come back to this country and still not be respected. So that's a heck of a sacrifice. So, you know, say service and sacrifice or sacrifice and service, but please throw sacrifice in there. That's just from a veteran. You know, service is welcome to McDonald's. Nevertheless. Um, <laughs> and so um, I have a medical background in cardiovascular ultrasound. Um, I'm a general contractor. Um, I'm a licensed code compliance inspector. Um, I have ran nonprofit programs, written grants, um, build, um, I don't know, curriculum, same pot for Massachusetts. I've done a lot of things. I've done, I've done a lot of things. I think things. that's really quite unique. I think a lot of people uh, in our uh, circles and within our arena uh, here in New England and Massachusetts specifically, uh, might not be aware of all of those different things that you, uh, you know, uh, you know, embattled yourself through to get to where you're at. You know, I mean, I understand uh, I'm a minority and I, I, it's certainly very evident that you are. And uh, what was it like? You know, this is one of my questions, you know, because you know, being Hispanic, it wasn't as hard. Um, it was just overcoming a language for me because of my color. But for many Cubans uh, who are uh, a, a, of uh, African descent. Um, it was difficult for them too, but I got to see that and uh, how my mother allowed me to see through it. Right. And um, share with us uh, some of that, uh, Leah. Can you share some of that with us? Because, you know, going through the military as a black woman and all of that, talk you to know, us. 
I don't know, Rick, did you and Jay Simp like have like a back room talk conversation? No, because you know we're already like, we're already one. So. <laughs> right. Well, I say that I say that to say like this afternoon was like a remarkable breakthrough. And I literally mean that. Like, you know, I just it was just a lot I just simply had to release. And it literally happened about an hour and a half ago, about maybe prior to, you know, us coming live. And, and, it, and I just had to just deal with it. Um, and it, it was reflective on all of that. Like, it's just, um, I, I, I guess the best thing I could say is I wish someone had given me a role. Because you strive and you strive to come from a hard place to aspire to a better place. I, I'll say, i.e., let's leave the projects. Let me try to buy a home. You know, mm. thinking if you want a better life, you know, aspiring to things. But you right. don't want to be there at a home ownership with the rest of the people that you grew up in around your family in your in your community mm. being the only homeowner. That's mm. that's not a you know a, I mean it's a happy place for the person that's acquired it, but it's a very um lonely place. And so you're always trying to bring the rest of of, of the the community with you the best you can, try to help them understand loans and mortgages and how to save and and what it means to make a bank relationship or do whatever it is you can do. But at the end of the day, the real release for me today was that, damn, I wish somebody had told me that reaching a certain plateau of life meant that there was a lot of people that you wanted to come with you mm. that will not be there, no matter how hard you try, mm. no matter what you give, right. no matter how long you drag them, no matter how many 10 fingers you give them. And as happy as you are for the things you've accomplished, it's, it's happy. I mean, happy. And then you have to say, dang, I wish somebody would have told me it was going to be this difficult. Yeah, you know, I, 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 I um, just being, you know, at my age, you know, it's just kind of a, it's in a way, it's, it's a wonderful uh, way that uh, the socioeconomic and the, uh, the economic empowered uh, mm. companies and individuals and the minorities, those of us that have uh, tried to get involved, uh, I don't think they really, or we, many of us at times, didn't understand the level of scrutiny that we would be under in a microscope uh, by so many different people and so many different views from so many different angles and associations, from, from, oh, I don't like to point fingers and names because that's something I don't really do unless I have to call somebody out specifically within the arena. And then it's basically a black list and a check mark that all of us can agree to. Uh, and Bobby would know uh, with Mascan and how we have gone through the, the cycles of life, watching people come and go in our arena. And then those of us that fundamentally created it. And you just mentioned, you know, the 10 fingers and the helping hands and, 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 and that form of thing. Well, when I was growing up and what I got to see was a little bit different than what we have now. So to see the two of you and, and, and I want to bring Jay into the picture because, you know, I want to hear from Jay too, that it, it's, it's unusual to be, uh, you know, at my age in the cannabis arena and be this great grandfather of hybrids, but little and below behold, I didn't know any of this uh, two or three years ago because prior to that, I was just an advocate. I was out there, New Hampshire Freedom Rally, uh, any rally, anything that was festivals, anything that had to do with music and production and movies and anything that had to do with that, I was, I was part of that. I wanted to be part of exposing cannabis to everybody and like make it happen legally. I wanted things to become legal for everybody. So it was difficult, you know, being minorities as we are, um, to make this transition. So, so let's compound that now. And, that, you know, let's just say it, that we're, we're black and we're we're lesbians or we are, we're married beings. We're married beings. We don't have to bring that word into the equation because you're just married beings and you love one another and you've evolved now into this alchemy league. No greater power could, could individuals have right now in our world than individuals like yourselves. It's like you guys have more clout and power than you realize, I think, at times. I don't know, because you really do. You step on a threshold that nobody's at but you guys. And you share this love uh, with so many. So I don't know, Jay, 
Jay Phillison, get, get, give us give us the love because I know you're all bound. Oh, that man. Way. I'll I'll spit it out and I guess I'll give my background after. I think that's where Lee and I were today, kind of like that emotional break where you want to be like so grateful for where you are, right? Like we work really, 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 really hard, you know, to get here. But then it's like if you if you by the time you get here, if you have like nothing left, then it's like, well, what was the point? You know, if you get here and we didn't come in, and that's the thing. I think I was disappointed when I first joined the community and got into the industry. I was disappointed because I came in as a virgin. I knew nothing. I hadn't even really smoked before. I tried a few times, didn't like it, it was never my thing. And Leah's like, you know, come on. And I first told her no. This was all Leah's idea. I was, uh, I was, I was good. I have no, right? I have no All right, all right, all right. Now, now we gotta, we gotta, we gotta traverse a bridge now. Now we gotta traverse this bridge because, you know, we know of Leah a bit now, but we really don't know a lot about Jay. You know, she's Leah's wife and she's the pretty girl that people think that's there. Where's her voice? Where's her, where's the rhyme to the reason between this alchemy league. So really? could you share a little bit of yeah, could you share a little bit about your rainbow really? and how you you know blossomed and how were you like like Leah did very quickly tell us you your high school grade school tell us the right. things that got you to where wow hey, this is me. come okay know? all right um wow okay so i was born in boston um roxbury and um, I went through the foster care system. I was adopted by family, though. Still the foster kids. So shout out to foster kids in America. Shout out. Um, and yeah. That's what it's, I'm talking about. Because um, okay. when you're a foster kid like that young, well, for my family, I think because I was adopted by family, mm. they kind of like hide it from you. Mm -hmm. So you don't really know. I didn't really understand like foster until I became like an adult. And I was like, oh, that's a thing. Oh, that's why I was treated like that. Oh, you connect all these dots. Mm. It's interesting. Coming into 30, I was like, I gotta, this is an interesting, like, there's a lot of realizations happening. So anyway, mm -hmm. um, I went through high school. I was like a, like a small little kind of like whiz kid genius. And I applied for all these like private high schools. And I just knew I was going for it, right? I was gunning for it. And I got in. And I got no money and I was heartbroken. And um, so I ended up at East Boston High and it was the best experience of my life. It was, I, in like a year in, you know, your counselors come back and they're like, hey, we can reapply, maybe get you some financial aid because it's straight A's. And I was like, you know what? No, I'm like loving it here. I joined ROTC. Um, I graduated top of my class. Um, I was the president of my National Honor Society. I was like the Captain of the step team, editor of the poetry club. I was just like, just do everything. Squash player. She plays yeah. squash. I am an avid squash player. She plays squash. She's Shout awesome. out to Boston and Rhode Island. Shout out um, Greg Zach. He started being, he's, he was my first coach. He is a founder of Squash Busters. Um, I started playing squash when I was 11. Um, I played right through high school and then I went to Smith College and I played for Smith as well. And now I play in a women's league. So, yep. Now, um, now see everybody. Now that's something that I bet a lot of people didn't know about you and Leah. That's that's very nice that we were able to share a little bit of your, you know, a little bit of your personal use and, you know, but it's still like for me. Um, and Bobby, we're not forgetting you. We know that you're there. Oh, don't worry, I know. I greatly appreciate your patience, but we'll come to you. And we'll, we'll, you've got, we've got time with you, Robert, and, uh, and thank you for being so patient. But, but the two of you, uh, Leah and Jay, um, and we're newlyweds. Yes, Lord. yes. we're newlyweds. And it was Leah's Not birthday on Monday. Hey, Happy people, birthday! Yeah, we got oh. into this industry, and people are like, "Take thank more, you. here it is." Have it, have it, have it, have That's it. So hey, funny. We're gonna come hang out, and we're like, "No, we're in Newlywed. We just celebrated our one year anniversary in February. Hallelujah, you know. And we made it. You know, we didn't get a divorce with this fucking. Well, yeah. yeah, I don't see that in your guys's future, yeah. and I actually, you know, because 
the short time these past few years that I have been able to spend with you guys and the way that I have been welcomed uh, into Alchemy League and to be part of Alchemy League and to stand together within that periodic table mm. of professionals and leading industry leaders and mm. corporations and uh, the different mayors and different commissioners and all of the different people who we've had to use to help us better understand where Alchemy League is. So with a question that we have, uh, what does Alchemy League have in store for consumers? Now, there's a good question. <clears throat> We've gotten away from ourselves. Uh, you know, I I'd like to come back to that question, uh, if you don't mind, because we still have to answer something. Um, we know what Alchemy League means in itself, a, a periodic table of, of sorts of people uh, gathered together. And um, Could you guys maybe give us a rundown as to what's in the near future uh, with your team? Because I don't think the community really doesn't know who your team is. I don't believe in its gist of things. Could you maybe share with us who's on your board and uh, what are your plans here in the near future? And then we'll get to stores and consumer goods and other questions. And I, and I want to ask Robert uh, and welcome him too. I'm very interesting question. Um, whew, okay, so I'm going to start off with what's in store, what we've been doing since we've been issued the provisional license. We had that we've almost fallen off the face of the earth, but we have not. We've been diligent and we've been working extremely hard um, putting things together. So what Alchemy League did was look at the process once we got the provisional license and said, wait, because we assumed after 610 days and we know how many hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of time, money, and energy later that, okay, now, now here we go. Actually, that was just getting out the gate. That application, $610,000, $300,000 process later was nothing. That was not the beginning of the race. The provisional license was yeah. shockingly it blew my mind a little bit okay so i had to sit back and if anyone knows me strategize restructure gather my thoughts our thoughts our position and begin to move forward what we decided to do was move forward with applying and submitting our application for our medical license so we can become vertically integrated we can grow what? We can all right all right all right hold on here just a minute okay. everybody that is amazing news now for anybody that doesn't know uh to be an ss or an ee applicant and to be awarded what you've been awarded and now you're saying that you've you've applied for a medical license so that you can be a fully integrated cannabis provider throughout Massachusetts? Correct. We submitted that application two well, and a half years ago. Here, 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 here. Let me be one of the <laughs> first to, to, to say congratulations because quite frankly, there are very few, if any, who have gone through the entire vertical integration process. So I'm very proud to, to, to hear you say that. And I think anybody out there that's in the cram, we have a lot of people, by the way, ladies who are chiming in. Julie chimed in a little earlier. Uh, to thank, thank you. And uh, we, we have a lot of people out here that are watching and listening. So in itself, thank you everybody for listening. If you have any questions, uh, Steve Portales, anybody out there that wants to share uh, any questions, please get back to us uh, and ask, you know, I'm sure the girls will be happy to answer. So again, so keep moving now. We'll go right back into you have applied for a medical license in Massachusetts. Correct. Um, I, so uh, that was about, Two and a half, three weeks ago, um, we did get a response because I su uh, submitted that application to the Cannabis Control Commission through the same portal that we did for our recreational license. Um, and they did send me back an email response letting me know that they received it and that they have sent it over to the medical marijuana department and that they'll be responding back to me moving forward on these matters for medical. Um, what else we've been doing is we've been wow. reaching a <laughs> <laughs> What else? That's big news in anybody's realms. I, people just don't get that. It's like uh, that, that's phenomenal. I'm really looking forward to see how this unfolds. Okay, keep going. And so, what else we've been doing is reaching across the aisle and developing a relationship to actually develop businesses um, from economic empowerment perspectives and SE perspectives 
in my mind, my belief is that the, the best way to train a, a community is from the community. If you're, if you're not from a community, how can you deal with those particular issues and their attitudes and the things that they come with that you might consider to be baggage? And we're just like, look, man, you know, we'll have a totally different conversation, you know, than a person would because we can understand it because we've lived it. And so um, we're not looking for jobs, we're looking for business development. And in my mind, in an Alchemy League's understanding of business relationships, you need to make them. So we are partnering up with Revolutionary Clinics, developing and designing a training program called GIFT, Green Industry Funded Training, where the, the industry on the medical marijuana side, that's the large can you, can conglomerate. You, can you give us that, that acronym again? Could you just, can you say what it is again? The WIT? No, GIFT, G, G-I-F-T. Green yes. industry funded training. Okay, now hold on, another timeout. Um, now you just mentioned uh, a, a, a branded company that's out there now, who uh, many of us know on many sides of it, the table. Um, yes. From positive and negative, and um, I, I'm, a, I'm asking because you know, I, you know, I got tens of thousands of listeners, and people are watching, and they want to know that 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 comment that you made. Uh, is this something now, is it now time that Rev realized that, A, it is a community, it's just not, let's take this over and bourgeois everybody and try to take over space and licensure, uh, because they did have to go to court over this. Uh, is this is this now the, the, the leaf of uh, the olive branch, so to speak? Um, let, me, let, me, let me just be frank. Um, I, I have never, Alchemy League has never, engaged in any of that communication, dialogue, attitude, perspective towards anyone in the industry, whether it be Revolutionary Clinic, Sierra Naturals, Meta, whoever bought, sold, whoever, whatever these businesses decide to do with their businesses, Alchemy League has never engaged in any of that. And the reason why is because when we decide to do business, I don't want you engaging in mine. So our business perspective is this. And to, in order to develop businesses, you have to be with a business right. that's been in the industry that understands the loopholes that can guide you and direct you. And I think you it's important. I think that, it's also important. I think I agree with you. And, and I know that uh, that's why I'm asking, you know, to, to have Rev step up with Alchemy is I think it's a it's an olive branch. I think this is a, well, a positive gesture for the arena to be watching, because remember, uh, we're in it. And we've been in it now, myself, for 40 years, 30 years, 15 in the, at the state house levels. I'm, um, I'm, I'm the bearer of love and togetherness as Mass Can and growing the community together. Uh, I have always been a stalwart uh, uh, advocate of the umpteenth level, not just for anybody's Bogart or anybody's branding. Uh, we've done this in a way in these last 10 years watching this come together through the NECAN, through MASCAN, through my events, through structured events that we've had to bring things together, to watch what happened. And I'm, I'm, I'm saying with reverence, uh, this sounds like an olive branch. And I would like to say that if that's the case, we need to have Rev on the show and talk to them a little bit about- well, First of all, I'm not gonna say that this is anyone's olive branch because I am a business person. I have been in business. I have made a business relationship. I have had business dialogue. I'm not, but at my hand, I'll ask for anybody to give me an olive branch and make any kind of reprieve for whatever was going on, okay. whatever the legalities were. That's good to hear. To okay, okay, so- I'm happy I'm to not, hear that. So I'm not, this is not an olive branch. This is a business communication relationship. Very good. They have a program called Aspire that they have been working on and developing. I have a program called GIFT. I have been working on and developing. Collectively, we are merging those two and trying to figure out how we make that happen and develop businesses. Now, I can't speak for anyone else. I don't, I'm don't. i not trying to. I don't. It's not an olive branch. It's a business relationship and communication and dialogue. And that's where I'm at. And if you want to speak to them, 
by all means, please do so. This is oh, good. that I always do. They always reach out to me. Rev Rev Clinics has been since the inception, since day one. Uh, they they've always invited me to their events to open this grand opening here. Come, Rick, 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 share. They've always shared and been never once have I ever anything with Rev. Um, right. But I, but I have, as many of us have, had to go through the barrage of growth and insecurities by many and uh, open open ears. I've watched with my open ears and heart. So that's why I, I, I uh, inceptually, I would have to say an olive branch, <clears throat> but not really. But when you look at the data, the information that's out there to, to go down this path now, I think it's, it's, it's perfect. It's, it's a good space to be in with, uh, like you said, to aspire and, and to a gift. I think it's, it's, a, it's a great Thing for the community, and I think it's a great thing for Alchemy, and uh, as well as Rev. So I, I think it's a real positive movement in a direction, as you said, of business relationships and developing them in the sound mind and body within the community of people who forbade and created this industry for industries and companies like Rev and many of the others to get involved with. Yes, with capital. Yes, with resources, and yes, over manipulating rules and laws with lobbyists and so on that we understand. But what we've been able to do at Alchemy is override that basically, like short circuit it and say, uh-uh, we're here and we're proud and we're going to stick it out. And Rev Limits is there now. I, 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 Clinics is there. I, I think it's cool. I, I think it's Thank just you. cool. <laughs> I think it's Thank positive. It's a, it's a wonderful, it's been a, it's been a very interesting relationship. It hasn't been one that's been broadcasted and talked about. It. Well, and it's a good thing we're talking about it because I think that it's, so our media and our group and our people within the arena deserves to know Alchemy League is here. Uh, they're working and they're working with people who have been in the industry who have tried their best to do what they can to get their customers and get their, their feet into the ground like any other normal business would and go through growing pains and individuals and wackety wackety. But you know what? Stuck it out and kept going with it. And I'm proud of that. And I'm proud of people like that. And I'm proud of us and at Alchemy League to know that you're having an opportunity with a player who's here to stay too. And they're not, they're not going anywhere. Ooh. And they give a good product. Uh, I hate to tell you. Better tell them, Rick. Rick. Rev Clinics put down some good products. Man. That's right. That's we bring right. our A game every time. I got to tell you. Again. Now, let's go. Let's do it, Bobby. Bobby's chiming off because now we're into his realms. And, you know, ladies and gentlemen, for those of you who don't know, uh, you know, Robert, baby, Joe, Jeffrey, uh, he's one of the board of MassCan. But not only that, he's a brother. He's a brother in arms and he's a brother in family. He's a brother at every turn of the wrench. Any thing that you ever needed, if you ever needed help with anything, and I mean anything, just about you reach out to Robert and you're gonna find out within minutes it's it's good. So as a brother to a brother, you've invited me to uh gray sesh, black sesh, green sesh. You invited every type of sesh. You've invited me on stages, you've invited me to Boston Freedom Rally, you've helped me become part of the members at the Brain Trust at Mass Can. I am so uh, happy to announce another brother in arms uh, and a member of our arena uh, and a stalwart advocate and family member of ours, Robert Baby Boy Jeffrey. Thank you very much for being with us at Alchemy. And please, you know, share a little bit about yourself. Uh, tell people a little bit about yourself and what you're doing now. We'll get to the kids. All story. right. Yeah. So, Rick, thank you for having me on your show, making it happen. We love you. Thank you again. Um, so before I go into the Alchemy, um, I met the ladies a few years ago. They, like like Jay said, they were virgins in this in this arena of um, cannabis. They they had their little uh, grow tent up, making some amazing. Uh, what we guys made cotton candy that day. Yes, the cotton candy. So that we got talking. I was a director of Mass Can at at that time. Um, uh, member liaison and I and, and invited them over to a couple of the um, events and then to a couple of the meetings and we kicked it right from there their personalities it was like it was, it was meshed 
it was meshed. And um, so, yeah, we've done over the last couple of years, we've stuck close to each other. We've worked through some things, found out information on how to push Lydia uh, forward in this process. You know, like she said, 600 and what, what, 610 or 630 some days. It was a long process. It made you think it was never going to happen. Now, mind you, there are team members. We have team members here on Alchemy League who are putting their all, everything, their lives on the hold and their lives on the line just for this cause. And they want it to happen. And, and so with that being said, a lot of us knew it would, but the time patience, it, it was just too long. Um, the time and it, it amazingly happened in the time it did. And now we're pushing forward with medical. As, as Leah stated, we want more. We, you know, we want to help the patients. It's not about you know, opening the store, it's about the patients and the adult users. Like, look at during this pandemic, adult use got shut down. That was ridiculous. Now, that was those, just ridiculous. What Governor Baker did in that one was just a, a true poke in the eye. Let's serve alcohol and let that go on and all the pharmacopoeia that's out there. But let's absolutely. not let people have not only rec, but medicinal, because many medicinal patients buy rec because they just can't, can't even afford to get the medical license to go and get cancer. So it's just it's that or they don't want to give up their right to bear arms to do so. You've yeah. got a lot of veterans that like to have their LTC or their FID, and they are not willing to give it up for a medical card. So adult use works out. There are patients that are patients, even as adult use. And just to chime in, we just partnered with Street Certified. And so once Leah lets you know about um, us moving forward on our private club, members only will yep. be able to get their medical cards for 50 bucks. Oh, yep. Did everybody hear that? Just could, could you, could you lay that, that back out there? Because, you know, I've been quiet it's too long and this too is long. so glad we've having this show because I want to let some shit rip. I'm, I'm about had it. We got to let this thing go. We really got to get it out there and people to know, you know, that uh, Alchemy League, myself, uh, my Allele Genetics and my Annihilated Brands, what we're going to be bringing together is unlike what there's a lot of great people, a lot of <laughs> businesses out there and a lot of great proof of that in our arena, but there hasn't been one fundamentally of an alchemy league. And I love to say that name because it's like, it means everybody. Wait a minute. It rolls off your tongue. Yeah. Well, it does mine because I just love the word. I love science, <laughs> and I love, uh, you know, breeding and it just the, the, the nature of how cannabis proliferates at all industries. That's why I call it the arena. Everything yep. that cannabis touches is every business function and every portion of humanity and society that we have. And it's an amazing to understand that. So we just have to bring the balance. And by having the word alchemy in our group, it just means that how do you get all those chemicals to create one being? Mm. And that's what Alchemy League is. It's so neat um, to be able to, uh, to talk with the girls. And when we do, it's like, it's a melding of the minds, but <laughs> because we're already on the same page. Kind of like you, Robert, when they met you and, and you met them. And yeah, maybe they weren't so much keen about the arena, but they knew that they could leave an impact in our arena. And that, absolutely. absolutely. That is what Alchemy and the 10 Fingers, the helping of the hands, really started out. I remember when I met her uh, with Leah, we were with the commissioner. We were outside puffing down is what we were doing. And the commissioner was right there with me watching all high Rick because he knew me as a counselor to the commission of the state of New Hampshire. So he knows I'm over here puffing, we're all hanging out. And just watching Leah uh, interact with the Canna uh, commission and the people from within the arena, I just knew inside, I said, this woman, she's going to leave an impact. She's not here for, hey, I'm black and I'm this or I'm that. Nope. Mm -hmm. I got a community to think about my people and uh, I got to think about how I can leave an impact and social economics. How can I economically make an impact and show others that, Hey, if I did this, anybody can do this. Perseverance, hard work, dedication, a great spouse and a good relationship surrounded by a community of people who understand and for the better part, have been disrespected and humiliated uh, mm. from our sandbox far mm. too long and to uh, be a presence now and to be able to say, hey, we're jamming it with Rev. What you got? What? Rev, 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 Rev what? Rev stuck it out. Rev did what anybody else would have done. 
Rev went at it any damn way they could possibly to try to attain what the other people had already taken. So in itself, it's a balance. It's how industry and community come together. And I think that that's just neat that uh, a good business relationship and, and, and thinking about that, uh, it's, 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 it's good thinking. Uh, and I really want to c- help contribute and do what I can to uh, help bring that unity and, and, and the balance, you know, like Maz can and Bobby does, you know, he brings a lot of unity uh, throughout the community. And uh, again, they've asked me every event they've had, Mr. Naya, can you come? Can you be there? Can you speak for us? Can, they've always been the bomb to me. Never once have done anything, just the rest. So I think it's cool to know that uh, Alchemy and Rev Clinics, that's just like, wow. So I think what we're allowing to do with Rev is one thing we said when we got into this industry because we, again, we knew nothing, we knew no one. So you meet someone, they're like, oh, stay away from that person. Or don't speak to that person. Don't speak to that person. And so Leah and I are like, all right, well, we're going to enter this industry as if we would any industry. And you got to take everyone through face value. You know, we've had events and I literally have had people like circle flyers. Like if that vendor's there, I'm not coming. And I'm like, well, he already paid. So (laughs) he's going to be there. You know what I mean? And I'm going to allow him Bobby, we know about those. Oh, yeah. (laughs) People know, but when you come to our events, there is security. You can be removed, whether you know who the security is or not. Our events are planned to the T. That is my background. I'm going to go play. So, we allow everyone to come, and then everyone can show who they are for face value. And all I can say is look, that person. They're respectful. They're polite. You know, what happens on your, it's just, I, I don't want to know. And if you all are supposed to be in the room, you know, it's okay. And if you're with that person and you don't invite me, I'm okay with that. I don't, it's all right. You know, we're, we're, we're not that picky. You know, we show where we're wanted, where we're not. Why would I want to fight? I think it's important to know that you guys truly are a gift. And I love that name uh, of a program gift. I think it's it's wonderful, um, and I think that the the community needs to take again for maintenance. They need to have a good look at, at, at the truths of many of these things because some people's realities and some people's truths are misconstrued to the community that surrounds us. And fundamentally, to create an industry in an arena and to persevere and overcome and continue to move forward regardless. I think anybody deserves those kind of props. It's, it's a difficult thing enough, uh, you know, to be called out or to be uh, chastised or ostracized or any of these things. Uh, but like us being minorities, uh, who's had it any harder than us? Nobody. And uh, Bobby, Bobby knows. Um, he's lived all too well, all too well. I've seen Bobby live it. I've, I, you know, I don't know many men. And I think a lot of us will know that no, Robert, uh, who have persevered under such adversities uh, these past several years, two or three years anyway, and it's been ongoing, but still persevering. Um, We don't find that a lot in the industry. People come, they go, they come, they go, they talk shit, they come, they go, and they talk more shit. But it's those of us who've been talking shit longer than everybody else that keep doing it that can actually do that. And yeah. hold accountable the industry. So Robert, thanks uh, for being there with us. And you know, always, all years, dude. Yeah, it's kind of like uh, being town, green town, muddy. Being in town, right there in the park, growing up in the city like that, understanding these gaps and mm-hmm. how we bring this bridge together, how we make things happen. Uh, we can't lose sight of these things, and I think it's important that uh, you guys are placed yourselves in a position now, not only your own and and the the board and the people, but just at a good level. I I think that's phenomenal. It's changing history, Rick. It's changing history. Yeah, it's going to change history right now. And that's, it's it's a, it's a a move on the chessboard that says, bitch, you in checkmate now because there ain't no one going back. Oh, there is no backwards. There's only forwards. 
No matter what we do, right over at Alchemy. We'll oh my God. Up. Fire it up. And right right there over time, up. you guys know it. I always say that onward and forward we go. And no one can hold that back with the truth and the light of cannabis. <clears throat> Excuse me. With, with good data research, you guys, we've already done all the, the talk. Enough talk. The applications are done, people. Right. The medical integration is upon us. This is going to be one of the very first socioeconomic impact and vertically integrated medical cannabis families in right. the nation. I'm so excited to watch it happen. I'm stoked that Rev Clinics is like, hey, let's work together. We can bring this program of yours. Let's align these things because that's what's necessary. And, you know, Leah, you and I have said this for a long time because, you know, my story is different than everybody's. Everybody's stories are different. Mine's a little unusually different, which is cool. But like when we met, we knew that we had to traverse a bridge. Mm -hmm. And by golly, I got to tell you, that bridge sucked. Because when you come from what we came from, and you have to reach your hands out and ask for help from those that basically ostracized you and imprisoned you and created rules and laws that put us in jails, you know, it's really quite something. It, takes tremendous fortitude and it's so well noted by not only me but many of us in the arena that this is happening this is a very very uh, uh, it's a move in the direction that i've always believed that those of us who did not have the financial wherewithal to be able to step up into an arena to meld together the bridge to help bring our com our community not theirs it's ours to the table together in balance. I think it's fucking powerful. I think it's really- I have to, I have to share something. Um, and I wanted to be clear. I am still 100% owner of Alchemy League. That's I don't right. have any financial investment partners. Nobody's bought me out. I am not for sale. I have never been for sale. Okay. And I have always been insulted with the implication that I was. Okay, now no, let's, that, mind, that let's, let's, let's be, be mindful. Let's be very <laughs> mindful, everybody. And I think it's extremely important to know, uh, not only to in this day and age and, and during these trying times uh, with the pandemics and so forth, but being a socioeconomically impacted individual and to be who we are at Alchemy League, to still continue to be privately held, privately owned, not sold out, nothing other than negotiations that have gotten us to a position where we're able to gift our community an opportunity with an established company who is actually, again, sons of bitches make some killer products there at Rev Clinics. You know, I got to tell you, and I've had many, 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 tried it many times. It's like always been the bomb. So in itself, it's time for melding. It's time to do like Mazcan says, to grow together. We need to grow the community together. And this could be a very potent potential opportunity for alchemy to bring our family this balance and i'm really excited to say that because it's not often uh, anywhere in the nation can we say something like this and take it for what it's worth because hey the great grandfather's saying it and i don't around when it comes to the cannabis arena so alchemy league is on their way uh, and continue to move through the chessboard to the finish line uh, i'm really excited to see how this goes and I'm really proud of, of the negotiations and the difficulties we've faced. Uh, we have, I got to share, we have faced mm. a few years of negotiated failures with people who you believe this, that. Remember, Leah, we have been, oh, we have been oh mm. my God, you just <laughs> shut the fuck up and listen, people. People like us are smarter than your average uh, business person because we come from the can arena already. We built it. We don't have the bazillions of dollars to drop on it, but I tell you one thing: we can make I, it. I got a light sponsor that has the Rick Naya Pro Series light that'll sponsor our lights to get us going, and they're the cheapest lights going. You guys won't. When we have our electric bill and everybody's saying, "Oh, we pay ten thousand, and we go, "Yeah, ours is twenty three hundred. They're gonna go, "How do you do that? That's impossible. <laughs> you know, that's what science and technology does. That American machine vision and clear light technology. So that's the kind of thing that we're going to bring, not only from lighting, but to our labs. Absolutely. We have people in the industry. I, I have people who are willing to basically give us the equipment 
to set up so that we can get our feet off the ground and running. And train, and train new businesses to get their licenses and be licensed businesses to hire people, not jobs. I'm not looking for a job. I don't want to work for you. I want to work with you so I can that's develop importantly, and I, businesses. I agree with you. And I think that's a really big statement to be making because to empower a being more than anything is to have them be self-employed and have them be self-manifesting and self-righteously working for their outcome and knowing that they're not in the back corner in the, in the peanut gallery talking shit because I hear a lot of that from people out in the community, guys. You hear it, you see it. Fundamentally, people out there just trying to poke. Stop it, everybody. We're all in this together. This is a big sandbox. And if you don't like it, a bully like me will come over and punch you in the eye and then say, <laughs> sorry, pal, I didn't like to do that, but you needed it. So just cool your jets and be cool with us. Otherwise, we're really going to kick your ass. And he'll do it. Not physically. <laughs> he'll do it. We, listen, we have a lot of power in this community. And um, I very rarely go out and use this type of wielding. I do it with love and data and research and, and bringing together of people and a common ground like the Mass Count uh, Think Tank. I love hanging out with those people. We talk about some of the most complex, diverse issues that are faced with people and individuals and beings in the state of Massachusetts and the nation. And we come up with these ideas that they're implementing through rule and law that are going down the pike right down to the Cannabis Commission. So I'm, I'm super happy to be part of that. Uh, and, and also here with Heather Marie and uh, in New Hampshire and Erica Goldler and the people who have helped here in New Hampshire. Uh, Bobby has certainly been a staunch uh, warrior for me. I'll never forget the day he met me. He just knew. He knew. This, yep. is, this is the real McCoy. He said, yeah, this is it, brother. <laughs> me, me, right me and Rick go back a couple years. Yes, we do already. I'll never forget hitting it up with you at one of those gray market sessions for the first time. And my eyes just was like, this is the way hey. it's and I just couldn't stop them from coming. And then our wood session, we had the, uh, the concert up in the wood. Yep. Yep. Omar and the gang, we got to give them credence too. You got to share the love out in this community, people, because remember something? Green zone. We all started black and we all went gray and we're all trying to get green. And Smokey Oki, Robert, Smokey Oki, baby. Smokey Oki, <laughs> Smokey Oki, <laughs> Smokey Oki baby. But I think it's important to know that, critically speaking, that you know we are the arena, we are the community. We are those of us who have been subjected to an ill-fated war on drugs, which was directed specifically to minorities. And to see us standing at the tallest places we can be in the cannabis arena about to take that scale and, 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 and write it and yeah. write the wrong, I, I, I can't wait to go teeter-tottering and, and watch it work because, Leo, you were right. And Jay, you guys are right. There isn't a leaf. It's, a, it's an understanding of business, an understanding an opportunity of business and working within people who are, are leading and working and trying. They've been bombed, but you withstand the storm? That is what we're about. And I'm excited. I'm really excited to hear that news. I'm sorry, everybody, that I went off on that, but you need to know that, uh, again, as a diplomat and dignitary within the cannabis arena, and to hear things like this, it's exactly what I've been asking to have happen for years now. And Leah and I talked about this two or three years ago at one of the hearings that we met at with the commissioners. I was mentioning that earlier. And it wasn't a joke to her, nor I. She saw that within me. She knew that guy, he's about us. Yes, I am. I'm not about a me or, or, or I thing, because there's no I in team. You don't get anywhere without a team. And what better team to have than people at the highest levels and echelons of our industry helping one another? I think it's cool, man. Big news ahead, I guess. I, it looks like Alchemy League's about to drop a big-ass bomb on the Massachusetts cannabis arena. Everybody get ready, because I know Rev, they're not letting go. And these girls, they're my family. And... But together as Alchemy League and, and uh, you know, with Julie, again, she's not with us. And I love Julie so much. You know, we, we need to give her a, a little props because she brings a, a good yeah, perspective to business. Uh, she's got a lot of experience that people don't aren't aware of and illnesses and has battled illnesses. Mm, she has. Uh, she's my right hand. 
That yes. is my ride or die right there. Okay. Yes. I'm telling you, the team is serious. We're coming. We're looking forward to it. We love this you, is, community. Look at my We're face. You know what I'm doing, don't you? It's We're like Julie is my sister. We're looking forward to businesses that wanna that wanna actually be in business so we can bring you on. If you want to do manufacturing, if you want to do cultivation, Rick will be the cultivator. We'll find the manufacturing. We'll do the labeling. We will help you. We are trying to develop and create businesses. We can only take five at a time. And we're taking one cultivator, one person that wants to do retail, one person that wants to do manufacturing, one person that wants to do, who knows, gummies, delivery. edibles, deliveries. And, and and whatever else medical, that's coming up, okay? So we're you, I, I want everybody to take a note. You know, I don't. You know, you, you said that so quickly. It, I I barely heard it. But oh. you're you're offering basically uh, like a single set, five tiered system opportunity for those that want to work. Not so that's how gift work. is going. So that's how gift works. That's why it's called green industry funded training. Okay. So, well, Alchemy League will take the first run and go through a revolutionary clinic, get all of our higher echelon people understanding on board, know what's going on, make sure our manufacturing is up to speed, our cultivation is up to speed. We know all of the ins and outs and what the Kansas Control Commission is going to say. We're part of all making all of the legal decisions in those rooms and in those arenas. When we take that information, we develop Alchemy League. And as we're developing it, so as we're building and developing our vertical integration, we'll be doing our training. When we come out of our training, we have to go directly into implementation. We will be up. We will be running. We will be trained. We should be ready to go. All right. You guys hear all that, man? That's a lot going down, really. You guys have to understand that it isn't just an opportunity to get into this industry or this arena and different facets of it. It's bringing it together and educating these 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 people, these economic empowered uh, owners, working with industry leaders to come together with a plan that can be duplicated, not only with the licensures that, that Alchemy owns, because remember, this is privately held and privately owned. They can have three stamps of each and any, they can do a five-way integration in three different locations all over the state. What? Every license available. So to see that and to have that opportunity out there, anybody that... Uh, it's out there, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm calling them out. Anybody out there that is within the uh, medical uh, lab industry and social equity priority first. I'm taking those first. I don't want a general applicant. I'm sorry. Right now, that? I don't, I can't train you. You sorry. hear that, everybody? Just make it be known, just you know, in, in a manner that's understandable to all of us. That hey, she is working with socioeconomic empowered people. She has window of opportunity. And many people that don't understand this, it took a lot of effort for uh, Leah and Jay and Julie, myself, Robert, uh, Peter. There's a number of us that work very diligently to try to get the girls to where they're at. They've done this on their own. They didn't need anybody. They don't need me. They don't need Robert. They don't need anybody. But you know what they did do is they alchemied it. They allowed this opportunity because that's where they're from, from the community the social impacted community and an economically disadvantaged uh, opportunity. Does that make us disadvantaged? Hell no. Mm -hmm. So what does it do for us? It gives us that opportunity to give back. And that's what's so critical about Alchemy League. We're already giving back. We haven't even gotten started. We've got it all started, but the funding, the financing to move it forward is about to, to just, just about to do this now. The balance is almost met. When that happens, it's like geometric progression. It's a cookie cutter. We'll teach others to do this within our community. We'll teach them how this is done. We'll show them and empower them within our network, our distribution, our friends at Rev, our friends at Cura, our friends at Truly, our friends within the community, the botanists, companies that we <coughs> know would be happy to have our products just because of who we are. So think about that. Uh, I, I'm really, what a great show. I'm, I'm like, this is my show, and I'm like, this is great because <laughs> we're exposing some big news that I I wanted to share, and I think it's critical that we begin now sharing it and let it be known because you know after today, thousands of people will be have seen this, and it will be shared 
50, 60, 80 different sites around the country. So we need to be known that Alchemy League is here to stay. Uh, we're privately owned. We're vertically integrated from medical all the way through the entire mass Massachusetts Cannabis Control Commission's uh, requisites. We are moving forward as we're supposed to. We're not the billionaires, but we're going to surround ourselves with people who understand how to get there as we have, with integrity, dedication, and being devout to our arena and our friends and within the community. Now, let's get back to one of the questions. Um, somebody had a good question about products and what you were gonna do with products. And I thought that was a great question. But here it is. What does Alchemy Leaf have in store for consumers? <laughs> Come on, Jay. Come oh, on. Jay. God. So, oh, you know, so, you know. so my wife is the oh, one boy. that does the voila. Products. And I'm going to let her take that. I'm run with it, baby. Tell them. Tell them what we're um, doing. Come on, I'll, Go. I'll start with the, we haven't finalized everything that will be um, in the dispensary. So okay. to start, um, because we have our, our private members club, we will have our summer menu coming out probably in two weeks. And we're going to do um, bacon cheeseburgers. So shout out to Beast Coast Bacon. We're going to be supplying yeah. the bacon for us. Beast yeah. Coast. Coast. Yeah, thank you. Um, we will have those. We will have vegan burgers. We will have buffalo, our infamous buffalo chicken empanadas. Got to put those on the summer list. And so we'll also do a vegan empanada. Um, but a newest thing that's added that we're really excited about is ice cream. Mm. Ice going, cream. Ice cream. We're Who's going, making the ice cream? Huh? Who's making your ice cream? We have an ice cream maker in High Park. Privately owned as Privately well. Privately owned as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Heather Marie Brown makes an award-winning ice cream. And the Creamery uh -huh. Station, the Creamery, they make a really good, uh, you, you know, Bobby, they, they, they make a good. Yeah, the Creamery, yeah. 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 It was good, good. All right. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're excited. We're excited. I'm so happy to hear what's going on right now. I'm, I'm almost elated. Anybody that that knows like me to hear the things we're sharing would be like, holy shit, what's going on? We're on a rocket ship about ready to take off. Yeah, we are. Yeah, we are. And we didn't yeah. have to do it like everybody thought. Give me the money and I'll give you 50%. And I did. No. That's never going to happen. Or Rick, or the other way around. Please give me some money. Can okay. you give me 50 cents? I'm like, look. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll bring you something for this. That's not how this works, guys, man. We've been selling weed. We've been in this arena so long. We've got to do it with the people who we know are part of the community, and they're not going anywhere. Okay. You know, that's who we are. We're the sandbox kids. I told you that when we met, Leah. You did say that, Rick. <laughs> but it feels well, don't, don't come down it. my street unless you want an ass whooping. But I'll tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> you can do it. You can come from where we come from. And you and can do it. it. So more than anything, we want people to know it can be done. It's hard. Ooh, I'm not gonna say it was hard. We're That's talking about this is not what we thought yeah. success and enlightenment looked like. You know, we didn't we didn't think this would be it. <laughs> but here we are. I and think we're just we find a lot of humility. Back. I think we have found a tremendous amount of respect um, this last couple of years. I know we have. I think mm. between the three of us and Julie and, and Robert, many of us aren't privy to. Uh, the many nights and conversations of our souls that we have been able to share, uh, me, Julie, Leah, and, and Jay. Um, it's really special, everybody out mm. there. If you're not listening, you have to understand that Alchemy League is just, it's very special. It's not what a lot of people, I think, misconstrued. Oh, they're doing this or tailcoat or this or that. That's not what's going on here. Uh, we're a family. That's dedicated, uh, again, no pun, the highest level of industry standards. We're not going to settle. We're not laying down. We're not giving away stocks. We're not giving away options. We're not doing anything unless we know that the burden of the proof is for the alchemy of it all. And that is tremendously critical for us. You know, it's it's everything that you guys represent. It's it's how you've manifested this this far. Uh, how could it go any further without the community bridging it? Man, perfect timing. I'm glad that you guys had your show. Uh, now let's talk about what you, you, you have some locations kind of thought of and could you share possibly what's going to happen maybe or where you're going to set up your first uh, opportunities? 
Well, you know, here's what I've learned in this industry, Rick. Hold your cards close to your chest. And I say that because the moment that somebody thinks that they can slide into some place that you that they think that you're gonna be with more money, and now now they now they want to leverage you, you know. Oh well, you know. So yes, we have location, and yes, we are going to be vertically integrated. And yes, the application for medical went in. And yes, the Cannabis Control Commission responded back to it. And yes, yes. and where is the moment that we go through and get the provisional to move forward to medical is when everybody will know where we're going. This this is such a critical move, I think, uh, that the community... Well, they're watching now. I can assure you one thing. After this area, <laughs> you got to know one thing, honey. Uh, I, I, I love you guys. You're my sisters in, in arms, and you know that I would lay my coat and life down alongside you already. That's cool enough. But I think everybody needs to know that it's coming. Uh, perseverance and patience. I used to tell my sales uh, uh, assistants and things, the, the, the five Ps, the theory of the five Ps, patient, professional, persistence produces profits look what was last profits dead last look how much you had to do to get that on the smallest finger <laughs> we're not interested in that everybody i mean it is part of a we gotta be, be honest i mean for god's sakes we're looking for a bottom dollar there's gotta be an roi here um, you know? but there's gotta be in business and there's a business plan and we're doing this in a way that keeps it in house and within our community vertically integrated throughout the state. And we couldn't uh, at Alchemy have done it any better. And we couldn't have opened up opportunities for different individuals and companies and people who are trying to get into the business. We might be those 10 fingers that you needed because what? Hey, you might have had a million dollars that you had to invest, but you couldn't get all the other resources done. But you had the heart and the will. That might be your window of opportunity to have a leg up or hand into Alchemy League. So can, everybody pay attention. Can There's I give one more tidbit? Happened here tonight. I'm sorry, Rick. Can I give one more tidbit? Because I don't ever want it to be construed. Um, my application for medical went in long before the conversation for Rev Clinics about Aspire and Gift. Oh, yeah. Oh, for the record. Oh, because God. I know that somebody, oh, they paid her. She bought out. Nope. My application was in before. You and I were talking about that weeks before that ever came into my vocabulary. And all of a sudden, it cuts out. What? Oh, here we go. So there's a lot that happens, even with board. You know, the girls, uh, I give them credit because they have a mission as well. And it's a dream. It's a dream that's coming true. And that's what's really neat. It's kind of like when they told Madonna, Madonna, you suck. You're never going to make it. Give it up. She never gave up. It's like these girls, they've never given up. And they continue to move forward And people in the industry who really were watching and were part of this. So I, I'm excited. Ah, I can't even. Ah, I'm kind of getting the hot flashes now. I'm going through menopause or something. I don't know. That's your age, Rick. That's your age. It's it's what it is. I got the itch. Something's going on. I got the itch. What's going on? But we know that through the love and the truth that's been shared with me, I mean, I could, I don't know about everybody else, but the love that has been shared with me, for me, and through me and the girls, uh, Julie, uh, and again, if Julie's not here, I love you, Julie, and uh, all the people in here. There's Red Blazer. Hi, Red Blazer. And Red. Herman, she's on board there, and Eric Eau Claire and Robbie. There's a bunch of people on, 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 the, on the screen. Uh, Joanne, Lady J's there. But anyway, um, I, I just can't get enough of, of this now. It, it's, it's just like world news. And why is it on my show? I'm glad I was the first to be able to pop this off and get it out of you guys somehow. Uh, this is like world-class canon news at the very, very highest levels, the echelons, because it's never been done before. Uh, here we are, socioeconomically impacted individuals. Uh, minorities at that, at the uh, and of all spectrums, you know, don't my creed. I'm talking about we're minorities, Bobby, too, me, you guys, the girl, yeah. Julie, 
We're all a minority. We've all suffered our, our post-traumatic stress disorders one way, mm. eight, form, or another, all of us. Mm. But to, to know that we all came out of the same sandbox, what? that's dangerous. That's what's dangerous. Very powerful. Very powerful indeed. I'm really proud to have you guys on the show. Uh, is there anything you guys want to share now? Maybe websites, uh, links, uh, page events, what might be coming? Where can we follow? What can we do besides, you know, sharing our love on our pages? What can we do in the community to get in touch with you so that we can help you guys? I, I just want to say I love you, Rick. I, I have loved you from the moment we hugged. I will never, I'll never forget it. Um, our conversation is deep. Um, and just to see us sitting here now and for the dream to really become, start to become a reality is, is amazing. Um, I mean, just amazing for it to be your show that we actually open up to. Cause no one, not, there's not too many people that have ever seen me shed a tear or get that kind of emotional. Cause I, I just try to stay professional as much as I can. You know what I'm saying? Because you know, it just, it's just business, you know, but it, it hurts. <laughs> yeah. I'm an emotional being. If people don't know me, the, those the people that are closest to me know that I, I am a man of a very short sleeve, probably bare. I, um, I wear it <laughs> on my heart and soul and the shine that I exude. Uh, my emotions have been like that as a child and my friends and family used to say, something's wrong. He's always emotional. Ah, he's gay. He's this, he's that. And none of it could be the furthest from the truth. But what I come to find is that I'm an empath that I feel people's everything. And I'm able to absorb much of who I'm in presence with and feel them. And uh, many times it's uh, very touching for them as well as it is for me, but to be able to share our selves because that's who we are yeah. our group alchemy league to be able to voice it in a manner that uh, can't be misconstrued is what was necessary and i i'm uh, so appreciative to be able to, to to pull your leg so to speak and yeah. get you to share some of this information with the community and you know i know what robert made a very good point and uh, you can see it in me i know what it's like being tired and I know what it's like being in the corner, having your ass kicked in a boxing match or a football, baseball, bat, any games, sports, giving it your all. It's like a death will, a sentence that you just can't give up. And for that, understanding what we've had to go through in these dynamic times and the, the adversities of uh, social economics and failed drug wars and uh, just this ridiculous racism shit, the things that we've been having to be exposed to by others, uh, not our own liking. Uh, I'm so proud to know that here this year, next in the next several years, uh, how Alchemy League and all of us uh, will be, be bringing some very rare earth cannabis of mine in our group with Julie and Robert and our grow team. Uh, and our, our labs will be producing some of the finest fresh pressed rosins and uh, our cryo cure systems will be bringing from vine to jar within a 24 hour period unheard of no no molecules no 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 spores no mold nothing cryo cure pure it's amazing it's the most it's amazing. amazing they'll be on my show the first week of june and i'll be showing canisters of the cryo cure cannabis and i want everybody to know that you know uh the cryo cure is uh, they're my family uh, i love greg i love tracy they're my family i'm uh, one of their spokesmen and i'll be traveling the nation to different shows and events speaking on behalf of cryo cure and sharing uh, the cryo cure love because it's like anything else it's disrupting an industry it's going to set a precedence that this is the only way that cannabis should be sold if you want it very clean and pure and processed even like fine wine this is the very finest wine that you'll ever uh, consume and uh, I don't just say that Danny Danko says those things at Dr. Ed Rosenthal uh, Jorge Cervantes many of the great famous uh, legends uh, that's what they call us <laughs> it's, it, it's kind of neat to say that <laughs> but it, it's true it's true that the cannabis that the cryo cure uh, does produce is some of the finest rarest in the world and then we throw in my my variants and my elite legacy group variants into the mix no one in the state of Massachusetts will have any uh, genetic pool of its kind. And uh, to be able to share that from Alchemy League is going to be a very positive 
uh, reinforcement to help balance and share what we have with the community. And that's going to set a precedence with the biggest of the corporations, because it's those corporations that are seeking cannabis variants from other growers. They, they haven't yet perfected their own brands because at the, at the time, the years that it takes, the investments, it's, it's not easy. So as rare earth growers like me and, and a number of others that are out there that will really be able to share back with the community uh, these very rare heirlooms and land races and like, I can't wait to be able to do that with Ravi and Julie and the girls. It's just going to be so powerful. And then our product lines will be very amazing rare products as well. They'll be at a premium. Is, these products won't be uh, like, hey, it's THCA. Yeah, but from what cannabis? It doesn't matter. It's THCA. Well, it does matter. It does matter. <laughs> it does matter quite a bit. So and, Rick, you um, asked me what's, what's new. We did um, our first collector's card the first cannabis collector's card and we did it for the um for, um was it what was the brand that we did it for the the um oh what was the gentleman in the wheelchair he was a, an older white gentleman that was in a wheelchair famous guy Stephen Hawkins was the first um collector's strain card that we did a collector's card from Alchemy League and so with the collector I, I'm gonna send it to you. What? What? Check it out. This is what's late. This is the newest thing. We're gonna post it on our website, so you know you can check it out. And in the collector's card comes the strain of the seed. So in case of emergency, crack the card and grow some weed. <laughs> and what's that site? Can you name that site right now for them? Oh, it's it's gonna be on alchemyleague.com. All right. Alchemy Here we go. Website. <laughs> Give it to him. Now, here it is. We've got about 10 minutes before the show's over, and I'm going to take the last 10 minutes, and we're going to ask any of the guests that are still out there that might want to win a T-shirt that's been sponsored by the Fino Cup, and it's an original 1949 Celtics brand style T-shirt. It's all authentic, kind of uh, the wearing apparel that the, uh, I don't know what they're called, you know, the good stuff. So anyway, I want to thank the folks at the Fino Cup. For giving us these t-shirts there's four of them and i'd like to give them away uh, i don't know what size they are they're uh, extra large extra large all right so they're extra large <laughs> all right so they're extra large t-shirts so bobby what do you think we should do to uh create a contest to have people that are still there enter how many viewers we have roughly right there good amount so let's do a number between one and a thousand Okay, one in a thousand. Pick four numbers there, Rick. I'm gonna, I'm gonna write something down. I'm just gonna jot it down on a piece of paper. Is that all right with everybody? Yep, just let us know when it's done being jotted. Okay, they can't see me, so I'm just gonna write a number down. I won't even look. Yeah, I'll have to look. Uh, all right, I've got a number. Anybody? Zero and a thousand. Start throwing some numbers out there from zero to a thousand. If anybody knows Rick, you'll know the numbers. <laughs> I'm typing something in. All right, so here we go. Michael Doobie's got three, three, three. Uh, Cheryl, hey, there's my girlfriend, Cheryl Lee Gillum uh, from uh, Here Comes Sunshine from the Gillum Farms. I want to tell Cheryl that I love her. Uh, she throws the very first festival in New Hampshire of the season. And it, it brings together some of the greatest musicians, uh, sponsors, promoters, vendors uh, from the Dead and Jam family and the Vibe Tribe. And there might be, I don't know, four or 500 people might show up. It's quite a good time. But I want to thank her and I miss her so much. And I'm definitely going to have her on the show. So Cheryl, be ready. We'll have you on the show so you can share a little bit about where Here Comes Sunshine's at. I love you. So the number is, uh, Cheryl, you wrote 8681. It's between zero and 1,000. <clears throat> so give me another number, Cheryl. Uh, Michelle Herman, <laughs> Michelle's got 420. Jack's got seven, uh, 75. Rebecca's got 69. Uh, Rebecca came back twice. Uh, she wanted to get 69, I think. And then she came back with 375. So it's still off. Nobody's close. Uh, reply to Rick Naya. Hi, I love what you're doing and love your show. Keep up the great work. That's from Red Blazer. I love my Red Blazer, my Red, brother. You're the best, buddy. I Everybody love Red. I have some of Red's chocolate. Red I love you. Chocolate bar. 
Red Blazer threw the number out, though. He threw 710. I'm sorry it wasn't 710, though, brother. You know, whoever is still playing, just keep hitting numbers because I don't care if you you go, you, you, you say one through a thousand. Just keep it's going. close enough. There. Michael Doobie hit a 777. That's not it. Like I sent it to you through your Facebook Messenger. Can you pop it up on the screen? Yes, I can pop. Did you send a number? Is that what you're asking? Yeah. All right, let me see. <laughs> and that's not the number, but that's funny. If anybody can see that. Hey, oh, yeah. Hey. That's the collector's card coming. And there's a one that gives you all the information on the back, and you'll have a seed, and you can use it as a rolling tray. You can use it as a topper. I like that. It's really, really nice. And the seed will be embedded in the card. So in case of an emergency, crack the card and plant some weed. You guys hear that? So we're going to have a card, a collector's card series coming out. This is amazing. And like she said, there's going to be a seed implanted within the card. So if there was an emergency you need to grow, pop your seed and crack it and grow. That's pretty neat. That's just, you guys have to know that some of the stuff that Alchemy League does, we have some of the most talented artisans and people in the in New England that are part of our network of friends. And they just want to support and be part of what we're doing. And to see these, this card is so cool. I can't wait to start sharing. And there's going to be one of me. There, there, is. there, is, Rick. there is, Rick. We there are is. working on it, Rick. We're working. Woo. That is beautiful. Well, everybody, again, we're going to be having some cards. Get ready. Stay close to Alchemy League. We've got five minutes. Uh, let me go back to the numbers. Holy shit, people are going crazy. Uh, here we go. Now they're all playing. Sons of bitches want my T-shirts, huh? All right, let me get this up here. Let me let me hold on, everybody. I'm sorry. I'm kind of clumsy with this one. Oh, my God. Look at all the people. 777-666-669-240. Not yet. Not yet. 666 is my number. Yeah, 413, <laughs> one, two, three. No, those aren't the numbers. 888, Rebecca Dimitri. Keep going, everybody. Red Blazer, keep cracking it. it. Throw some numbers out there. For God's sakes, everybody. Keep throwing numbers. No one's even gotten close. Well, he went to a thousand. I mean, Rick, I mean, the, the variable in there is like. <laughs> you know, right? Really? Jesus, Joy Boy. I mean, he said he had said like a hundred. <laughs> I'm smart about numbers because I'm a mathematician. So what I would have done is I would have gone, 500, no. Then I would have gone 750, no. 250, no. Then I know it would have left me in the middle. I would have gone back to 501, no. 601, no. And then I would have known, hey, I'm playing in the five and 600 range. Okay, look at people. 111. Yeah, they're staying busy here. Look at this. Michelle Herman. 113. What's up, Dan Wufkowski? We're playing between one and a thousand. We're giving away a free t shirt. Anybody closest to the number that we picked? And it's a hidden number. Nine oh, ninety nine. Dan Wufkowski. Dan Wufkowski. You may have been so. You got it. One eleven. No. Dan. All right. Stop, everybody. No more numbers. Hold on. Dan Wufkowski wins a T-shirt. What's his number? Five twenty-eight. Yeah. The number was five twenty-eight. See, five twenty-eight. I wrote it here. Nice. And, and, and Rick Dan just Dan gave you the hint. He just gave you the hint on how to play it. I know. When he said, okay, I'd be in the 500. <laughs> well, now, now we're going to yeah. come up with another game because I got three more t-shirts. We got three more minutes. Everybody, uh, pick a number between one, one and 50, and the first uh, three people closest to that number wins a t-shirt. Ready? 50. Go. Come on, ladies and gentlemen. Put them numbers down. One to 50. Closest three. Come on, put it out there. Wufkowski already won one. You can't play no more, sucker. <laughs> <laughs> one to fifty, ladies. Hey, that son of a bitch won a. He won last week a beautiful pouch and five uh, feminized wedding cake seeds. Ooh, so he won, great strain. You won about five hundred dollars worth of shit. He just don't know it. But you have one plant just cost you that. One hundred fifty. Nobody's close yet. Look at this. Fifty. No, Twenty-three. Donate. Look at this. People I started my garden. If someone donates seeds to my garden, this is not to help me. But Look at everybody playing. Garden. This is crazy. If anyone donates seeds. Oh, I, wait, I got two. I got one. I got You're one. Welcome. I got two. Red Blazer's a winner. What's the number? Hey, Carol Gillum. All right, stop, everybody. Stop. We got a timeout. We have two winners. We got two winners on that one. What's but the number? I've got one T-shirt left. Now, everybody PM me your address. I'll put this in a zip mail. 
I'll get this out to you here this weekend. It'll be on your desk probably by Wednesday because I don't pay for the expensive shit. Believe me, I don't have the money. So anyway, <laughs> I'm being honest. I'm being honest. All right, one more T-shirt. <laughs> All right, so here are the winners so far. We have Dan Wufkowski won one. Uh, we have Cheryl Gillum White won one and Red Blazer. So there's three winners so far. I've got one. Yeah, Dan, you won one, sucker. I'm going to have to ban you from playing. You win too much. <laughs> <laughs> bring him to the uh, casino with there us there we go one minute left i got one t-shirt what are we gonna do all right here's what i'm gonna do what is my favorite drink anybody Ooh. that comes up with what my favorite drink is you will be a winner white russian so if anybody knows me close they're gonna know you know what my favorite thing to drink is especially in the mornings you know but a very special kind of thing to drink it's not Can just <laughs> and I wrote it down. I wrote it. I down. can't. I can't give that in. Yeah, get that away because that's that's that that is definitely out of the question. <laughs> no, it's not a screwdriver. Thank you very much, though. I, I have been uh, known to entertain a few screwdrivers. <laughs> uh, okay, keep going, Mike. Well, Michelle's got something close. Captain Morgan's was another one of mine. Mimosas, no, they got me too drunk. The mimosas. Water was a good one. It's a form of coffee, but you have to know what kind of coffee. It's just not coffee. Eric Martin knew it was coffee. So what kind of coffee is it that Rick Naya drinks? And Professor. Oh, it, oh, it's a, spe a specific kind of coffee. And if anybody knows Rick and knows of any of the events, they'll know exactly what kind of coffee this man likes. You'll know what kind of coffee I like if you've been to And where it comes from. <laughs> Michelle says Cuban because she knows I'm Cuban. Who's <laughs> Bella? Pilon. That's so funny, Michelle. That's a great answer. And even a cappuccino from uh, Michael, whoever's answering. <laughs> Very close. But nope. Uh, if Eric Eau Claire was here, he would have won a T-shirt because he knows my favorite coffee. So, no, it's not espresso, Rebecca. Everybody's very, very close. Cheryl, go ahead and spill the beans. If you know it, I'll let you win. But anyway, you've already won a T-shirt. <clears throat> so, Cafe Bustero, Dan Wufkowski says, that is my favorite brand of espresso. Hey, Jack Eau Claire wins a T-shirt. He said it right. Can of coffee. So Jack, Jack jumped online. He wins a T-shirt. Eric, uh, Jack Eau Claire wins a T-shirt because he knew it was Love Java Coffee. I drink a high-performance butter coffee. Uh, it's one of my sponsors. Not only that, uh, it helped save my life. I used to weigh almost 300 pounds, and I lost about 120 pounds uh, drinking that coffee and staying on a, on, a, on a good vegan and a good uh, healthy diet. Low carb, low gluten, uh, no gluten breads, and just it helped me uh, get back to my sexy thing. So anyway, <laughs> Eric, you're a winner. Thank you very much. Uh, Rebecca says I run on Dunkins. <laughs> <laughs> So does it happen with America? <laughs> that is so funny. Well, everybody, I want to thank you guys for coming on the show. I mean, we could spend hours talking and just kicking up a storm. But again, let's make it be known. Alchemy League is on the planet. Uh, we're not only on the planet. We're on the stamp. We're ready to move forward. Uh, we have cards. <laughs> I saw that card was phenomenally cool. Can't wait to be sharing some of that love. But we're on a mission. And it's a mission that was set forth by two beautiful women who have a heart. And they ain't going to take no shit from anybody. And none of us will from the sandbox. And that's why we, Robert knows, board members, directors of the community and the arena, those of us who put ourselves out there all these years, that's why we support Alchemy League and we work with them to help support all of us. Because out of many, we become one. Mm. And that is something I have always said. And thank you for allowing me to help be with you guys, share my love with you guys, have you share your love with us. And uh, I really look forward to periodically, you know, I only do a show on Thursday, but I think, you know, what we ought to do maybe even is pop off one on a Tuesday or a Monday night or do an event, special event, as we watch Alchemy bridge the broken balance in the community so that we can have some balance here in Massachusetts. And that's what this is going to do. Help us bring some balance. And for any naysayer out there, got any issues, got any problems, got anything to say, uh, leave it in your pipe and smoke it because uh, that's where it needs to be. Remember, we're all in this together. We're all in this trying to help us, our, not only our families and ourselves, but our arena and our community. And there's enough people watching to hold us accountable that we don't need all the hecklers in the, in the peanut gallery running their shit. So keep it in your pipe and smoke it. 
Share your love everywhere you go. Uh, don't bring the shadow. Don't cast the stone in a glass house. Don't come running your shit down our sandbox because you know what's going to happen. Please, let's have a sense of integrity. Let's have a sense of unity as we bring and grow our community together. Thank you very much to Rev Clinics. I want to give them another kudo. I want to thank some of our other sponsors, Urban um, Yep. Go ahead. Do you want to share something else? Tom Snyder. Man, you're the best. I love Tom, man. He's a great guy. Thank you, Tom. Let's, take, let's thank Peter Bernard also for helping Peter us. Bernard, in. Peter Bernard's the best. Julie's the best. Joy mm -hmm. Boy's the best. Rick, you're the best. I just, I'm blessed. Thank you. You know, you're a blessing to us. And just remember, like we've always said it, you don't come fucking around on our street in our sandbox unless you want to get your ass handed to you. And around here, uh, we have a very staunch family that has been not only persecuted, has been poked in the eye, has been lambasted for ridiculousness out of people's ill-fated smoke. So what they ought to do is take a huge bong hit and, and hold it because I've had about enough. We're moving forward. We're exposing it now. We're going to show all of you that there is a will, there is a way to do business. And it isn't by taking handouts and trying to get people to buy you out because that is something that we will never do, ever. This is a legacy that we're going to leave behind to not only our community, but to our children and their children. And uh, with that being said, I want to thank all of you. Uh, again, some of the sponsors, Megan D., a Turp Town Throwdown, let's give them a thank you. My family at my Fino Cup, thank you for the t-shirts. We'll be doing this every week, giving t-shirts and caps away from the Fino Cup, Scott Audette and Justin Rayoun. Uh, I want to thank Jeremy Borgeson and uh, Jen Borgeson at the Harvest Cup. Uh, again, Urban Acres, Holistic Hemp Solutions, which is Julie. And uh, everybody that supports us, everybody. Thank you, MassCan, MeCan, and everybody in the Cannabis Arena. Thank you for supporting me. Thank you for supporting us. Thank, Thank you all, you. and have a wonderful night. Until we Thank see you guys again next week, right on! <laughs> you guys good? Sit. Sit. Oh.